Talk family and welcome to another episode of Talk the Talk. I'm your host Dish and today I'm excited, so excited I can't stop smiling, to introduce and welcome Sasha Martiningo. So, born and bred in Johannesburg, he matriculated at Hyde Park High and studied for an IMM diploma at Technicon but Bartestrand in between running his own business, a mobile disco. His official introduction to um, the music and broadcast industry was when he joined Virgin Records as a product manager and PR, a move that would soon open the doors for him to achieve his greatest goals um, and follow his childhood dreams. Um, but the reason for inviting my next guest, Sasha Martiningo, is because of his profound knowledge and understanding for motorsport and in particular Formula One. Now, Sasha joined the Super Sport team as the presenter of the Formula One racing series for a period of 17 years, oh my gosh, <laughs> also leading him to present and commentate on the GTC circuit racing series. He has had the luck and great opportunity to meet and work with some of the world's top racing champions. Also, a praise has also been sung about his support and championing for women in motoring, hence he's here. So he is described by common associates and friends of ours as being a humble and knowledgeable legend um, of motoring who prides himself in uplifting and educating people through his experiences and blessings, I'd like to call it blessings, um, yet he strives to continue to learn and grow. So, without further delay and without me coming across as a starstruck teenage girl, <laughs> let's welcome Sasha Martiningo. And this interview, as always, is proudly brought to you by Sariti Solutions. Hello, Sasha. Shoot, Desh, that, that was quite an opening. That was, <laughs> my goodness, you, it is so, it's so wonderful to be here and to meet you, you know, oh. in person. So oh thank, you, thank you for having me. God, I, I can't talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's a first for you. You see? <laughs> um, Sasha, I am, I've never felt like this before. I'm trying to not make you go pink in the face, but I am, okay, you little. know, for a woman that is so deeply um, you know, um, involved in motoring. Firstly, it is few and far between when a woman gets so involved that her whole life revolves around mm. motoring and cars. And, uh, and to meet someone that is so profoundly um, respected in the trade, I'm like this, the, I can't say I've arrived. When you say you've arrived, then you're really not going to learn anymore. But this is a highlight of my career. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, uh, it's my privilege, it really Aww. is, thank you. <laughs> so Sasha, you have been blessed with incredible opportunities to meet um, some of the world's racing champions um, and you know it, it's really something that is a highlight of many people's career in motoring. How did that feel for you? Yeah, I, I suppose you know it, it's quite a long story but the shortness of it is if you want something or you like something you know what try and go for it try and go for it because uh, you never know mm -hmm. what's going to happen so motor racing started with me when i was very very small and from there i just developed this incredible love for it and um went to go and watch racing i never raced really myself so i was always a fan mm -hmm. but then i decided to to try and turn it into a career mm -hmm. and learn about it so and as you said you know if, if as soon as you think you've made it somewhere then you're going to stop learning and, yeah. and I always believe that you know I know um, less and less um, about more and more mm -hmm. that's out there so I, I've been very fortunate to meet many many very famous racing drivers both locally and, and internationally and in the world of Formula One I spent a whole day with Lewis Hamilton in South Africa. I spent a whole day with Jensen Button. I spent a whole day with Felipe Massa. Mm -hmm. I've interviewed the likes of Nigel Mansell, Jano Trulli, Jano wow. Lacy, um, uh, Giancarlo Fisichella. You name it, there have been 
many many people that I've been very fortunate enough to meet over the years mm -hmm. but I've I've never been an autograph hunter mm -hmm. and I've always respected their space um, because I, I think I have an understanding of, of how difficult their lives can yeah. be yeah. but I've just made it something that I've always wanted to do and wanted to learn more and more and more and that, that is about motorsport and, and specifically Formula One. Mm -hmm. Well I'm just going to ask my crew now for a, a, a pin and <laughs> I, I'm, I'm an autograph hunter so I'm going to ask you for your autograph. Um, Sasha you once hosted the I think MPH 07 mm. okay and um, it was an event with uh, my idol Jeremy Clarkson I was going to be my my dream was to be the Jeremy Clarkson of South Africa as a journalist <laughs> but you've worked with uh, him and then Richard Hammond um, what was that like for you you I tell you that that was um, that was quite quite exceptional so it started off as MPH which was miles per hour okay and that sort of was called in the UK because they couldn't call it Top Gear mm -hmm. because of rights with BBC okay so it basically was a um, a show um, in a an area like the dome that we had and eventually we did Durban and we did Kyle Army as well we, had, we turned it into a festival and um, I got a phone call by a, a friend of mine unfortunately who's, who's passed now Paul Edmonds and uh, he's a, he was a friend of mine, he, I didn't know him at the time, and he phoned me and he, he basically sat there and he said, listen, we're bringing MPH to South Africa, and i would seen it on YouTube, because mm -hmm. they used to host it called MPH in Birmingham in the UK. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no ways. <laughs> and, um, and he said to me, would you be interested in, in hosting it? And I was like, nah. So I was jumping up and down, I was going crazy. <laughs> and, um, also, cut a long story short, um, I had to fly to the UK and I was meant to meet with Jeremy Clarkson mm -hmm. um, at a pub and he couldn't make it. So I met with Andy Willman. Mm -hmm. Andy Willman was the executive producer of Top Gear. And I met him and we had a pint and a pie and we just chatted. And basically, I, 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 I arrived in the morning, we had this lunch, I went back to the airport and flew home. And two days later, they said, listen, you. Um, you've got the gig, uh, they really like you mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> I mean from there it was just crazy because the show started on a Friday and we did 11 shows in three days mm -hmm. okay for MPH mm -hmm. but Clarkson and Hammond arrived on the Wednesday mm -hmm. and then I met Jeremy and he was hello Sasha how are you lovely to meet you blah, 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 as he is and we sat down Desh and he basically said okay well let's write a script and he had a script of their MPH Birmingham show and then I gave him some South African anecdotes and we put right. those into the show. And what I learned from working with them, and I worked with them for six years, mm -hmm. um, is professionalism. And what Jeremy Clarkson says goes. Mm -hmm. You do not deviate from his script. You can add, there will be anecdotes that are, that are written into the script. Mm -hmm. You just go with the script you'll make it work the way that he wants it to, to work. So besides doing the presenting or whatever, he writes everything. Wow. And in a way he sort of directs it as well. I learned so much from them. And I'm very, very proud to say that, you know, Jeremy, James and, and Richard, uh, I, I hold this as actually very close friends. Wow. So I'm, I'm oh very, very gosh. blessed. So like, now I'm connected, right? So I yeah. can get Jeremy's <laughs> number or something. <laughs> Listen, I would not be able, in light with what, uh, of what you said now, I will not be able to work with Jeremy because I'm always off script. I never stick to the script. So... You, it's amazing <laughs> how quickly you will learn because even, even you know, his presenters with him, Jeremy, uh, uh, Richard and James, mm -hmm. also knew. Just wow. don't go off the script. Right. Just right. carry on. Where, yes, of course, as they did more and more of their shows, they, mm -hmm. they, they knew each other so mm -hmm. exceptionally well. But when right. you're doing these kind of shows, that's what you do. And mm -hmm. um, he, he, he takes no nonsense. Um, he's so professional. I learned so much from, from Let's him. Let's be ambitious here, okay? Yeah. I would say, rather he works for me, then he'll stick to my script. So I'll wait for the, the day when I can say, listen, Jeremy, come to me. I've got a job for you. Well, <laughs> listen, if, if you're doing farming, mm -hmm. then, then go, because that's his new love. He makes craft beer and he's do, he does farming. He's, he did a show last or two years ago during mm -hmm. COVID mm -hmm. called Clarkson's Farm. I don't know if you've seen this. No. Des, you have got to watch the show. Gosh. It is hysterical. Oh, wow. And he's become a farmer. Okay. And there's a new season coming and I'm sure there'll be some new Grand Tour stuff coming as well. But yeah, listen, 
three lovely, lovely guys, all unbelievably intelligent, yeah. incredibly uh, knowledgeable and mm -hmm. professional. That wow. pro professional, professional, professional. Wow, that's what, amazing. It was an incredible treat for me. Yeah. Now, Sasha, the only thing I know about Italians is pizza and pasta, but we're not going to talk about food now. Well, you, we can if you want. Okay, we can. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you do have that Italian ancestral racing gene mm. um, in your blood. Motorsport is your passion. Yeah. Why so? Well, I'm Italian <laughs> and um, I think it's that simple. And um, I think I was born here, of course, I'm South African. Both my parents are Italian, all my grandparents were Italian. Um, and, you know, I grew up and, and my, my late grandfather had an Alfa Romeo and I fell in love with Alfa Romeos. And then growing up as a, as a young little boy, five, six years old, my dad was a very, very hard working man. Well, he's, well, he's now retired, but mm -hmm. he was a very hard working man. And when, when he had the opportunity to take me out, we went out. and and those times we're going to the racetrack he also loved motorsport mm -hmm. and going to going to my first ever grand prix when we had grand prix in the 1970s mm -hmm. and then the early 80s and then eventually in the 90s i remember going there and and um and there was just this red car and you know i didn't know yes i knew it was italian but it was ferrari mm -hmm. and it was a red car right and um I, my love just started there and I've always been intrigued by Ferrari, but then it became Formula One, mm -hmm. you know. So I think I've become very, very objective in my thinking over the last 30 years of how Formula One works, who and what. But my love will always be for Italian cars, right. women, clothes, <laughs> food. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I like your Aston Martin over here, but it, you know, it's it's not well, an Alfa Romeo. If you look at my bag, there's a Ferrari brand. On oh, bag. okay, there we go. There that's we, well, that's yes, my brand. That's it. There we go. I like that. <laughs> so we are witnessing Sasha, and I think that's one of the fundamental reasons that I invited you onto this platform. Mm. Um, not just because you are Sasha, but also because a lot of things positive. Uh, things have been said about you and championing for this transformation that is happening, this incredible transformation of women in motoring. What advice can you give to women um, to stay passionate about motor, motor sport, okay, despite okay. the gender discrimination? Yeah, I, I think it's very, very delicate and important mm -hmm. points that, that, that you bring up. A series that got started a couple of years ago internationally called the W Series. Mm -hmm. which is a woman-only series, single-seater cars, um, look like baby Formula One cars. Mm -hmm. And, you know, don't forget the world goes, oh, but hold on a second, you know, if women want equal, then they must compete against the, main, mm -hmm. the, uh, the men. Mm -hmm. You and I are built differently. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's just a human genetic it's body, parts. The body the, it just is that that's the way that it is. Mm -hmm. And I think when they created the women, the W series, um, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, are we going five steps forwards, 30 steps backwards? And if anything, I think it's great progress mm -hmm. because it's highlighting these ladies who might not have had the opportunity to get to Formula One for many other factors, not because of talent, mm -hmm. but for many, many other factors. And now all of a sudden, those ladies who are racing in that series, and I'm talking specifically that series, mm -hmm. are now being noticed by Formula One teams and are being brought in as ambassadors or reserve sim drivers. And slowly, you will get the chance to get there. Mm -hmm. Now, we have to also be very careful. When you talk Formula One, this is the pinnacle of motor racing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like, oh, why aren't there women in Formula One? You go, you know what? we could sit and chat here for hours and hours and hours about that but there were women in formula one mm -hmm. um, and we actually had a south african racing driver back in the 1970s wow by the name of desiree wilson who was a magnificent racing driver went to eventually go and race in, in the united states as well and then you know not in formula one at the moment but in the w series uh, before COVID came our very own tasman pepper Mm -hmm. um, was there and did exceptionally well mm -hmm. and was meant to go back in 20, we are, 2020 um, when, when sort of COVID lifted. Went and did all of her quarantine, stayed away, but unfortunately wasn't allowed to go and race because of what South Africa COVID regulations were, whatever. Was meant to race this year, Tasman, and fell pregnant. Oh. 
which is a blessing and good luck to her. Mm -hmm. But you know, we've got that talent mm -hmm. here in, in South Africa. Um, and I think there are more and more girls and young ladies and women getting more and more interested in racing and not only just because there's many elements of, of motorsport, but um, getting interested in racing cars, bikes, boats. Absolutely. You name it. As a woman in motoring platform, and as I mentioned mm. to you off air, um, the biggest platform, uh, I think, social media platform in the world that's promoting this, I've had hundreds if not thousands over the past four years women um, you know speaking about it or inquiring about a woman in motorsport i've never been able to venture into uh, that uh, you know that that arena um, and that is why i thought it was so important for for you to get involved uh, and maybe start something in terms of opening this narrative, making it possible. I, you know, I, I, I find that very, very humbling. I think what really opened this up was a series on, on Netflix called Drive to Survive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Drive to Survive, I think it's, now it's going into its fifth, fifth season. Mm -hmm. When it first came out, there are so many people, and I've done this for 40 odd years, chatting to people about Formula One and how you should enjoy your Sunday, and they, oh my word, cars going round and round. Yet 600 million people tune in every Sunday to watch it. Mm -hmm. So you go, get with the program. Drive to Survive came and gave us more of a behind the scenes and inside what's actually happening in the world of Formula One. And it sparked an interest amongst a lot of ladies. Right. Because now all of a sudden they, they sat there and went, yeah, oh, Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, yeah, I like Lewis Hamilton. Man, and he's so cool and he's got his hip and this, that. Now all of a sudden they were getting closer to him and understanding. And then they were going, oh, gee whiz, that's a nice car. Or that. And they sparked this interest of, of going, there's more to this than um, cars just going round and round. Now I'm beginning to understand what the sport is about. Right. Personally, Drive to Survive, I'll watch maybe the first show and, and then I'll leave it because it's become a little bit too Hollywood for my liking. I'm a mm -hmm. bit more of a purist and I think I, under, I, I know Formula One a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. But it sparked the interest and, and that has now brought in a tremendous amount of women who are becoming more and more interested in Formula One. And from there, that might spur this generation of young ladies, and I'm talking, uh, let's say, uh, 18 to 30. Yeah. You know, to maybe one day they have a child, and it's a girl, mm -hmm. and they sit and say, "Hey, you know what? Why don't we put you in a go kart or on a motorbike?" Absolutely. And, and I think and that's. That, I yes. think we're we're going to see two generations from now, mm -hmm. or generation and a half from now, a lot more ladies racing. I love that. I love yeah. the sound of that because, you know, that mom can say to a child, you're not just good enough to wear the tutu, hold the pom-poms and be a cheerleader. That is not what we want. That is not what we are designed to do. We can do anything that we want. In fact, race car drivers, in terms of the petite, not me, but I mean, you know, the petite belt of a woman and a female and being, uh, you know, geared to actually do it, it's, it's, it's not something that is, it needs to be promoted. And that leads me to my next question. How can we get involved or get more women involved or, uh, you know, educated? about motorsport well the, the whole thing about it is and i'm glad you actually brought up the tutu cheerleader thing because you know what i was going to mention and i thought well i'll come across as being sexist or woke or something or whatever but unfortunately we still live in society worldwide mm -hmm. where girls play with dolls and wear dresses and go and do ballet and boys sit there and bash their heads against the wall <laughs> and eat sand and and those things yeah. yes it does happen of course it does <laughs> i but have one of both you, son okay. and daughter, so yes, I know. me too so i know i know, I know, what, I know what, what i'm what i'm talking about mm -hmm. but there's nothing saying that a girl can't get into a go-kart mm -hmm. there's nothing saying that a boy um you know does ballet mm -hmm. we can do what you can do whatever you want right. i want to tell you just one little story of, of, a, of, a, of a, a teenage girl. She's 13 years old, South African young girl. Her mm -hmm. name is Taylor Hill. Mm -hmm. She suffers from a um, hereditary uh, disease called CMT. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm no doctor and I don't I understand it that it's a neuromuscular disease. Okay. Okay. And unfortunately, it's hereditary. So here is this young girl 
who has to walk around with she has braces mm -hmm. on her legs mm -hmm. okay because this disease um, uh, affects the nerves of her muscles and and then her muscles don't work so for her to get up from a chair just to walk she needs some kind of assistance mm -hmm. but what does she do every weekend she goes to the go-kart track okay with her own go-kart mm -hmm. she goes and supports her brother who is a, a national champion um, and she goes in there and with these braces and the way that they've sort of adapted because she got no feeling in her feet so she listens to the revs of her go-kart mm -hmm. for her to know when to change gears and do wow. things so she here is a, a, a girl who can barely walk mm -hmm. goes out and does motor racing because it makes her feel free right. so you know you can do anything and i just love the fact that this young girl she is the kind of person you got a champion for so she's, she's South the, African. She's South African. So Sasha, you and I are going to invite her We're to going our to. show. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm going to just put it out there. Sasha and I are going to be co-hosts yeah. on the show. We're going to promote <laughs> women in motorsport together, right? I, I think it's such a fantastic <laughs> idea. And, and, and this mm -hmm. yes, young girl, mm -hmm. as far as I know, she's been approached by the FIA, which is the Federation International Automobile, mm -hmm. which basically runs the world motoring as well as motorsport and I'm not sure if it's as an ambassador but as, as somebody who you just sit there and go there are no limits yeah. there are no limits mm -hmm. you know um, and and I just sit there and, and look at this this young girl at 13 who should be out jolling with her mates mm -hmm. um, and she sits and says you know what what am I gonna sit at home and cry no way give me my go-kart I'm gonna go around the track and I just, I think that is just magnificent. Absolutely. Magnificent. So, Sasha, what common challenges can one expect to face uh, when pursuing a career in motorsport? Okay. And the reason I ask this question is yeah. because I think after this conversation and what we are about to embark on, there's going to be an influx of, influx, right word? Yes. Of interest. And I think let's prep our our aspiring, uh, you know, motorsport chicks. Oh, fantastic. You know, that just excites me. It really, really excites me. The main thing, everyone will sit there and say, in motorsport, you need money. You need sacrifice, mm -hmm. like any job. Mm -hmm. You know, you sit and do your, your interviews and you know you've got your two young teenagers at home and, and you're going, geez, you know, today I've, I've got a full day, tomorrow I've got a full day. When am I going to make time, time for my kids? Right. Um, anything that is worthwhile in my yeah. opinion yeah. takes a lot of sacrifice mm -hmm. the big question is for young girls do you want to be a racer do you want to be an engineer mm -hmm. do you want to be the umbrella girl do you want to be the mechanic that changes tires a pit crew person it all depends what element you want to be but my advice to young girls and maybe to their parents who, who might be watching give it a go yeah. you know instead of next time uh, your daughter wants her birthday party and we want uh, i don't know coco the clown or whatever mm -hmm. go and book out a karting track yeah go to those indoor karting tracks put a whole bunch of girls they will have the best fun that you wouldn't imagine and you go nah, that's for the boys we'll do it no take the girls I and I promise you, they will love it. They yes. will love it. And that might spark an interest. And you might find an incredible talent. Absolutely. You know, just for the parents of, of, of our generation, our gener and I'm joking, our generation, it is so important that we, um, like I said, open the narrative. Yes. You know, and start the conversation and, and steer away from the traditional um, uh, methods and way of bringing up our daughters. My daughter is... My gosh, she is an extreme. She is a tomboy, and she loves uh, extreme sport. She loves being adventurous. She's never had a doll in her life, and that's not because of me. Because I'm actually quite girly, I think. But 
um, you know, and I encourage this. I I support her. Yeah. So it's so important for mothers to you know to support what your child wants, and and maybe then we will see uh, or we'll have this this generation or the next generation being the mentors to the future de- generation. We need to start somewhere. We need to find our starting point. Absolutely. So why is it important? I think in our industry is so important and so critical to stay optimistic yes. and enthusiastic, especially with when dealing with negative people. Yeah. How why is it important to stay positive? Um, you know, it's, they, I think there is a fine line between negativity and frustration. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, sometimes the most important thing is if if you've got a mate who all of a sudden is ranting or going crazy or you know just losing losing their stuff, listen, mm-hmm. just listen, mm-hmm. because it might be somebody actually reaching out and looking for for something. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes to people who are just negative, plain negative, and moan, complain about everything. You know, I'll just say, hey, good luck and, and try and move on because otherwise then I start taking that on and that's I'm that sensitive person who starts taking it on and wants to solve the world's problems. I can't solve the world's yeah. problems. I've only learned that in the last like five minutes, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, you think you can solve the world's problems. Negativity is unfortunately, it's, it's around there. It's what sells newspapers, it's what sells a lot of television programs um, and people thrive in it. Me, I'd rather sit there and say, if somebody's out there looking for help, I'd rather listen mm-hmm. and see if there are any clues or triggers, mm-hmm. and from there maybe suggest and ask them to, you know, maybe that they need some kind of help, and it could be out of frustration. Um, negativity, uh, you know, we can all be negative at, at some times, but yeah. I think the, the 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 healthy balance is is afterwards to sit and say, did I put on a good show? Mm-hmm. Um, am I happy with what I've delivered? Mm-hmm. And can can I hold my head up high and, and sit and say, okay, tomorrow I'm going to make sure that it's even better. Absolutely, Sasha. Um, you know, we had this conversation off air to stay relevant. To we, you need to hustle continuously, yeah. hustle. But is there any tips? I, I think you've stayed relevant because before you came here, um, I, you know, I asked <laughs> everybody, "Do you know Sasha Matiningo?" Because I knew you, but I didn't know you that well. And when I really got involved uh, in everything that I'm doing, I'm like, "Okay, that's Sasha Matiningo. Yay, he's following me on Facebook." But um, how do you stay relevant? Because you are very much relevant still in the industry. Desh, I've done radio for nearly 30 years. I did television for uh, 17, 18 years. Um, and then I've been online for, for, for many years. And, I, you know, from my radio perspective, yes, a lot of people know me from radio, but I chose to do something in sport that wasn't really that well uh, researched and well known in this mm-hmm. country. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm striving every day to become a master of it mm-hmm. um, and because of that I think there are people who are going to dislike you, hate you, um, curse you, whatever and there are a lot of people who are going to going to like you. I wanted to stay relevant not to become a star mm-hmm. but because I wanted to educate and inform and entertain people. That's mm-hmm. all I've ever wanted to do. Right. I never got into radio to sit there and say oh check me I'm a you know I'm a flash what happens along the uh, the your journey mm-hmm. is is what happens but i still believe that i'm here to entertain and to educate and have fun mm-hmm. and if i don't have fun then i'll stop doing it absolutely um sasha offline we were talking or off air we were talking about uh textbook you know and and learning and you, you're talking about education now you might not be able to change the world but today you've changed my world you really have and i believe and this goes in my personal life as well i believe that the knowledge you can derive from a person that have been experiencing what it is that you want to experience cannot compare to what you're going to learn in a textbook and you have you are a walking textbook for me (laughs) what we discussed off air really excites me i did not plan that by the way i'm an opportunist and i believe that when god 
the universe presents you with this type of you know opportunity to educate to empower and to um, you know uplift you should grab it with open hands and you just did that for me uh, you i think we're gonna i think this isn't this is i'm like starstruck at the moment but i'm gonna get to know you so well you're gonna be like my brother like my friend <laughs> and i'm gonna be like yeah sasha matining i'll give you his number because you said um you can give me jeremy's number now i'm just kidding <laughs> but but sasha i am so so glad that we're gonna embark on this project together and um i think we're gonna we, we're going to change we are going to change this trajectory yes. of women in motorsport in South Africa, and I think we can do that together, don't you? I'm I'm equally excited. I'm uh, just I think, as you said, what we spoke of there. I think there's just so much merit in it, uh -huh. and I don't know which movie it comes from, but there's a beautiful line that says, "I think this is the beginning of a beautiful story." Oh, I love that. I love that. Sasha, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for um, taking time off your schedule and, and helping me in, in, in my, I wouldn't say purpose, but my vision, in my vision. Thank you, thank you so Desh, much. Desh, continue what you're doing. Uh, you're doing a fabulous job and it's really been my pleasure to be here. Thank you. I've been endorsed by Sasha Matiningo. Thank you very <laughs> much. And thank you so much, viewers. Thank you for watching, commenting, and sharing our interviews and content. Our non-profit companies, the Motoring Woman of the Year Awards, which is powered by MFC and Evo by NetBank, and the Talk the Talk Studios, powered by Seriti Solutions, are aimed at recognizing and celebrating the women of motoring South Africa. We are not just telling stories, we are changing lives. Together, we aim to empower and uplift the women of our trade. For those of you that are searching for your new ride, please visit www.otto.evo.africa. We have thousands of vehicles on sale for you to choose from and we only advertise on behalf of reliable and trustworthy MFC accredited dealerships. This car listing portal is incredibly user friendly and you can also find vehicle reviews and car maintenance tips and advice all courtesy of Talk the Talk Studios. Ladies and Gents, I'm saying gents today because we have a gentleman, a very influential gentleman sitting right next to me. Um, but I'm going to take this opportunity because I'm hoping a lot of people are going to be watching this because Sasha is sitting next to me. But ladies and gents, we urge you to use our platforms and be the change you wish to see. You see, it's important to understand that successful, influential men like Sasha accept invitations like these as a gesture towards change of effort and encouragement towards the inclusion of women in the motoring space. Um, leaders like Sasha help us women identify, understand and verify purpose. Men like him are uh, committed to developing a work place for women in this male-dominated arena that is agile and adaptable. They have proved through their championing for this transformation that reskilling and gender equality enables an organization to fill skill gaps and boost employee productivity, um, thus resulting in inevitable success. So, Let's build each other up and promote equal opportunity. It is time that we all perceive gender on a spectrum instead of two sets of opposing ideals. If we stop defining each other by what we are not and start identifying ourselves by who we are, we can all be freer and this is what our movement is all about it's about freedom you can do anything you set your mind to even be a race car champion so ladies please never forget that the question isn't who's going to let me it should always be who's going to stop me <laughs> <laughs>